I'm currently at Muldrow Glacier, just northwest of Denali, the highest mountain peak in all of North America. Join me as I investigate the reason as to why this glacier is moving up to 100 times faster than it should be. Howdy. My name is Nicholas Zhang, and I've decided to research the recent glacial activity surrounding the Muldrow Glacier for my Spring 2021-214 Honors Project. So a glacial surge is a momentary, meaning about one to two years, event of rapid glacier movement. Uh, in this case, 22.5 meters, or about 73.8 feet in a single day, according to this velocity map, uh, which is truly unprecedented in terms of geological movement. And as a result of these events, large fractured ice formations develop, and the lateral moraines, which are sedimentary regions on the side of the glacier, are heavily disturbed. So the process in which one of these glacial surges develops is that first, the glacial till, which is composed of sediment on the bottom side of the glacier, suspends the water melted from the ice above. Uh, the meltwater then warms the ice above it and accelerates its movement. Uh, these are only hypothesized to be the preliminary events leading to a surge. The full set of, I guess, catalysts that lead to one of these events is still yet to be understood. All right, revisiting figure one, the trapped meltwater essentially works as, I guess, a glacial slip and slide, right? Allowing the huge ice formation to glide along its original path. So firstly, we see the aforementioned lateral moraines on the side over here in deep blue. So the, glacial, the glacier will start relatively slowly down south over here near the summits of Denali. Uh, keep in mind that the map is inverted relative to magnetic north. It then begins to enter this red zone here, indicative of ice velocities of 20 meters per day and above before emptying into the McKinley River to the north. So how does this all tie back to content we've reviewed in Bio 214? Well, it turns out that the rocks trapping the meltwater are the same sediments and debris that cause glacial striations, which we've learned that scientists use to study glacial movements. Uh, also, the fractured ice produced by these events can form glacial erratics at much faster rates. Uh, what possibly occurs is that large rocks fall into the crevices of the broken ice and are carried to the end of moraines and possibly carried away by the McKinley. Uh, drop zones follow a similar logic to that of the uh, glacial erratics. This presentation pulled information from the National Park Service, an article provided by the New York Times, and an academic article from the journal Marine Biology from 1985.